Welcome to Beyond Death, where we examine near-death experiences from people who say they died, visited the other side, and came back. Our next NDE comes to us from Dylan, who describes how his bond with his dog extended all the way to heaven. This near-death experience may very well be the answer to do our pets go to heaven. Let's get into it. When I was around 12 years old, my dad had went out of state to visit relatives or something. I remember I had wanted to go with him but school was still in session so he and my mother decided it best if I stay with my dad's sister, my aunt Heather. I'm not going to bore you with a day-to-day -day play on how that went, but when dad returned he brought with him a boxer pup as a gift for me. It was my first pet ever. I think it took me maybe a week before I settled on naming him Blaze. There is definitely something to be said about the bond that forms between a boy and his dog. Blaze became my best friend, but being a boy, the day came that I discovered girls, and I started spending less and less time in the yard playing with Blaze. By the time I had reached my teen years, I hardly had time for Blaze anymore. There was always something else to pull my attention away. One day, I rushed out the door to go meet up with some friends, and on my way out, I forgot to relatch the gate which allowed Blaze to get out of the yard. That night when I got home my dad was standing there with a shovel. Blaze had been hit by a car. I cried as I helped bury him in the backyard for the first time realizing I was never going to see him again. My mother told me the normal spiel about Blaze being in a better place, but I wasn't sure if I believed her. Parents are supposed to say stuff like that I thought. That could have been the end of a rather sad story experienced by boys since the dawn of time had my own destiny not chosen to allow it to continue in a way I could never have imagined. I grew older and got a job working on a road crew. We mostly dug trenches and helped lay pipes that ran the same direction as the roads. These pipes ranged in use from being ordinary sewage to being smaller pipes that the Department of Transportation used to shield their fiber optic wires for traffic cameras. I remember it was a Friday, because I had been talking with a co-worker about our weekend plans to go see this new band play in a club downtown. My boss told us to stop talking and work faster so we could get off on time then he told me to go to the truck and grab a tool we used to force feed a red and white striped cord, nicknamed Candy through the pipes making it easier for the fiber optic screw to pull their wiring later. I was on my way back with the tool when I saw the car lose control and head straight at me. I tried diving out the way but I was too slow. What's weird is in my head I could see things slow down and my brain calculated how screwed I was before impact ever occurred. I remember pain and feeling something wet running down my arm. I remember trying to sit up as my boss screamed for someone to get him the first aid kit and call 911. I started getting cold and tired but could hear someone saying for me to just hold on, help's coming. Aside from the initial pain, my death was rather easy, pleasant even. I was now floating above my body and could see my boss backing away as the paramedics arrived. I felt detached from the entire situation, not caring about what happened anymore to that body. Off to my right, I saw the tunnel appear and began floating towards it. And I went without a care in the world. I don't know what I can say about traveling through the tunnel that hasn't been said in countless other NDs so I will skip the journey and get to the destination. When I came out of the tunnel, I was in a large field of wildflowers. Every color under the rainbow and then some. They were the most vibrant colors I had ever seen and the flowers seemed to sing. Not a song with words or lyrics, but definitely a toned chorus that was a pure delight to my ears. I remember catching an aroma of lilac coming from the flowers and thinking that this place was so beautiful. Across the field I saw a man approaching me. He was dressed normally which is to say he did not wear a robe but more like dockers and a button-down dress shirt tucked in. He however did not wear any shoes at all which I thought was odd. Beautiful place, isn't it? He said to me when he got close enough. I know everyone says they communicated through their minds during their NDE, but when I say this man talked to me, his lips moved. Where are we? I asked. It doesn't really have a name, but you could call it paradise. The man replied before adding, would you care to see more? I think I would, I answered. We began walking across this beautiful field of flowers and gradually a small house came into view which we walked towards. 
The house was more like a mountain cottage, small in stature, and fit this picturesque scenery perfectly. It was almost something straight out of a painting. Next to the house flowed a narrow stream of slow-moving water that was the clearest blue imaginable. As we grew even closer, this man whom I still did not know told me that someone wanted to see me. Who? I asked. Then the man whistled very loudly, and from around the back of the cottage I saw a dog begin running towards us. I immediately recognized him. It was Blaze. As Blaze leapt into the air, hurling himself halfway up my body, and knocking me to the ground where he began to lick my face, the man again spoke to say, looks like he's really missed you. At that moment, no matter what anyone ever calls that place, it became paradise for me. I had thought I would never see Blaze again, and here he was ready to play. I began to cry tears of happiness as Blaze and I ran all over the place together. I found a stick next to the stream, and we even played fetch. I have no idea how long I was there, but we made every moment count. After some time the man again walked from where he had been sitting watching us, and asked me if I was ready to go back. What do you mean go back? Go back where? I'm staying here, I stated. I'm sorry, the man said. It's not your time yet, so you have to go back, but when it is your time, Blaze will be here waiting for you. I was crushed as I took a moment to say goodbye to my best friend. The man had now vanished, and I had no idea how I was supposed to get back to my body when everything just went black, and I at first thought I had went blind before realizing my eyes were closed. Opening my eyes, I saw my parents in the hospital room with me. They quickly told me not to sit up, or I could rip stitches out. A few minutes later, the doctor on duty came into the room. He began to tell me what all he had fixed in order to save my life, starting with a severed artery in my wrist and going on to include broken ribs, a concussion, multiple lacerations, and one of my knees would still need another operation if I ever expected to walk right again. I tried to tell everyone that came into my room about seeing Blaze in paradise, but nobody acted like they believed me. Some even said that it was the medication they gave me when I was first brought in. It was so real though. I have seen others state that their NDs were realer than real, and that is exactly what this was. I'm not big on religion, and I did not see Jesus nor did I talk with God or angels. I did not have a life review, but I did visit paradise, and I have faith that the day will come when Blaze and I run through that field of flowers again. Dylan Notes from Beyond Death If you have had a near-death experience you would like to share with our community, please feel free to email it to the email provided in the description. Submissions should be at least 1,500 words to be considered. Drop a comment below telling me what you think about Dylan's experience. Until next time, stay blessed.